Co-transport is when two molecules are moved together. They can either be moved both in or out in the same direction. This is called symport. Or they can be moved in opposite directions, which is called antiport. Co-transport is often a secondary active transport system. Um, and that's what I'll be going over in this video. So a specific type of co-transport called secondary active transport. This means that energy is used in the system, but um, indirectly. So let's let's see it. So the left side here is active transport. We went over in the previous um Previously, we've got the sodium potassium pump that is directly using ATP and creating disequilibrium. The sodium potassium pump is not the only ATP pump. It's the one we'll see the most often. Secondary active transport indirectly uses ATP. So it itself um, is not. <laughs> Instead, it's using a concentration gradient to move a molecule, a concentration gradient that was set up by active transport and must be maintained. So let's see an actual, just an example here, because the best way. So glucose, um, in this example, this, this is over time. So let's look at this picture on the left. Glucose is high on the outside of the cell. I'm sorry. It's low outside the cell and higher inside the cell. So it uses all the little glucose molecules. We want to move glucose in, but that's against its concentration gradient. We can't use a carrier molecule or some sort of passive transport um, because there's not a gradient. We would need a not just a protein, but an ATP using protein. How we do that for glucose is instead of pumping glucose directly, there's not a glucose pump, is we use co-transport. So we move glu glucose along with sodium. This protein is called a sodium glucose co-transporter. It's going to load in a sodium and a glucose and bring them both into the cell. Sodium is moving down its concentration gradient spontaneously and pulls glucose with it. That's all passive. Why does glucose come inside the cell? Because there's a concentration gradient from the AT pump. This is basically step one. We create the sodium gradient. In step two, we use that sodium gradient. Secondary active transport. Okay. This is particularly useful when we're for glucose, when we're moving glucose either from the intestine to the blood. Um, let's use that example, intestine. So we've got glucose that we've eaten, um, but despite that glucose is low inside the lumen of the intestine is the space of the intestine um, compared to inside the cell. This allows glucose to move freely from inside to outside the cell Number two here, this is facilitated diffusion. Glucose transporter, moving glucose in the, the ECF. Number two is just facilitated diffusion. But how do we get glucose from the lumen of the intestine into the cell when it's going against this gradient? Well, you know, I just told you this, right? We've got this co-transporter. This co-transporter can pull glucose along with sodium because sodium is high outside the cell and low inside the cell. So glucose can move along with it due to this sodium glucose transporter. Um, 
And that's going to continue to be able to happen as long as sodium stays low inside the cell. How does it do that? Sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium pump is constantly moving sodium out of the cell, maintaining low sodium inside the cell. So pretty cool process that combines active transport, facilitated diffusion, and then uses secondary active transport to move glucose across two membranes, um, which eventually actually diffuses into the blood um, because glucose is typically low enough in the blood that it can diffuse away into the bloodstream. The step that requires energy is step three. This co-transport process does not require ATP itself. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, learning check for you.